Good morning, church. And before we continue worshiping together, I have a few announcements I want to draw your attention to. The first is there's a service opportunity coming up. We'll be taking a day trip to MCC and Effort APA on the 16th. More information is in the bulletin and there's a sign-up sheet in the back at the Welcome Center. I also have another announcement for the moms group, which is starting up. It will be starting on October 10th and they'll be meeting every second Tuesday in the Family Life Center. Now there are some other announcements, so please pay attention to the following videos. Ladies, I'm Kim Pellman, a part of the women's ministry team here at RLMC. I want to invite you to our Ladies' Day Retreat on Saturday, November 4th from 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. in the Family Life Center of RLMC, featuring Friends of the Heart with Kim and Janine. What every girl needs, refuge, redemption, restoration, and a few good recipes based on the Book of Ruth. Lunch will be provided. The cost is just $10 for the day collected at the door. Sign-up sheets are in the back along with postcards with all the info on. You can also call the church office to sign up as well. Please come join us for a day of fun, fellowship, and praising God together. And please feel free to bring a friend. Good morning, Richfield Life. I wanted to talk to you this morning about an opportunity that we have for some of you in the church here today, specifically for you men. It's coming up to the end of the year and we are looking for elder nominations. If you're a man out there and you have felt God tugging on your heart to be part of the elder leadership of this church, we would love to hear from you. But I wanted to take just a couple minutes and remind you of the scriptural qualifications and the roles and responsibilities that an elder has here at this church. First, I wanted to take a moment to read out of 1 Timothy, where Paul calls all men who aspire to the office of overseer. Now, when Paul says overseer there, he also uses that word interchangeably with the word elder. And so, if you feel that call, we feel that's so important, that God's just there tugging, um, please listen in. And if you feel that God's calling someone to be an elder, we would love for you to put forward their name as well. Paul says the qualifications of an overseer, a man must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if one does not know how to manage his own household, how can he manage the church of God? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into the snare of the devil. And some of the roles that we have here at the church as elders is to exercise personal holiness. Elders will oversee, lead, shepherd, and care for the spiritual condition of the church as set forward in scripture. There's other responsibilities that we have, things like shepherding the flock, as the elders are taught in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. To shepherd the flock is to care for, nurture, build relationships with, to care deeply about God's people and to feed them with the word of God and prayer. 
also leading through example, being a positive example and showing Christ likeness in our lives. But also, that doesn't mean being perfect because that's not what we are. It means failing well. That's another way to lead by example, that when we fail, own it, call on the grace of God and testify to it. Um, we, we are men that we want to make it clear that we don't hold these offices because we're perfect. We're only here because of the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. Also teaching and exhorting. Now some may say, Aaron, I may not get up and do what you do. That's not what teaching and exhorting is always is. Teaching and exhorting can happen in small group settings, personal life settings, breakfasts, men's get togethers. There's many different styles of teaching and we need a variety of teaching styles. Refuting those who contradict the faith and being willing to speak up for the, for the grace of God. Managing the church of God and praying for the sick. And those are some other responsibilities that you may have. We also have an elders meeting once a month, and that's a place where we get to spend time in, in prayer together, uh, seek God's will for the church, and look at how we can better shepherd God's people to have them love God more and more every day of their lives. Now these responsibilities, again, may seem like a big deal, and they really are. It's a high call to be part of the elders of God's church. But again, I wanna remind you that these, this calling is not anything that any man has done to earn. It is only by the grace of God and the work of God in our lives. And some may be sitting there and saying, Aaron, those lists of responsibilities, you know, I can't, I can't do that. Well, I wanna remind you that the list of responsibilities of the elders is really not that unique from the call that God has on all Christians' lives. All us as Christians should be practicing holiness, following after Jesus Christ, failing well, that when we fail, we own it, we confess it, and testify to it um, to give God all the glory and all the grace. So if you're out there, I would love for you to take time to prayerfully consider whether or not being an elder of this church is God's call on your life. If you do feel that God is calling you or someone else, I would love for you to talk with Brian Aldifer, Jim Mast, or Stan Duick. They're part of the Elder Nomination Committee. So thank you so much for tuning in today, and I hope you have a great morning. God bless.